Uh, the next person we have coming up, uh, they, they kind of spoiler alerted that, but I'll, I'll do uh, my best. Um, she is someone who is an amazing actress. She's a great host. She's a comedian. She's an activist. You may have seen her on The Nightly Show or Broad City or on her show Decoded on MTV. Uh, so give it up for Francesca Ramsey. Thank you, Akila. I'm Francesca Ramsey, but most people online know me as Cheska Lee, and I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. I've been on YouTube for over 10 years, a blank don't crack, um, and I went viral in 2012 with a little video called Shit White Girls Say to Black Girls. I've spoken at colleges around the country and events around the world. I've written for Comedy Central. I'm currently the host of MTV's Decoded, which is a web series about race, pop culture, and identity. But this right now by far is one of the most important stages I've ever had the chance to speak on. And that is because this room is full of some of the most creative and accomplished and influential online video creators in the world. So I do not take that very lightly. So thank you for letting me be here to speak to you. So what I'm hoping to impart to you all is that when it comes to issues that matter and making a real measurable difference, you don't always need an audience which is kind of ironic since I'm telling you this from a stage with a microphone and you are the audience, but go with me here. Social media has really thrived on drama from like the beginning, right? But right now it feels worse than ever. If you look on Twitter or you look on YouTube, you'll see people boasting about owning and pawnage and drag her, subtweets, reading people for filth and spilling tea. Point blank, drama drives clicks with a capital dollar sign. And full disclosure, I have been guilty of some of this myself. It is really easy to get wrapped up in. I swear I have probably spilt more tea than a Starbucks barista during an earthquake. When I got into it on Twitter with an extremely popular YouTuber who will remain nameless, I was all too happy to dig through all of their old YouTube videos and screen cap every racist thing they'd ever said. Because what can I say, I fucking love receipts. Now, disagreements are bound to happen and some people need to get called out. But too often when these conversations happen online, a simple misunderstanding or even the most thoughtful critique turns into a performance. It's no longer about the issue or even the other person for that matter. It's all of a sudden about retweets and likes and views and shares and things get really messy really quickly. And this has sadly become the new normal, especially on YouTube. Response videos, drama channels, drama channels about drama channels, so-and-so exposed, not clickbait. Spoiler alert, it's all clickbait, and it's embarrassing. Clickbait will build an audience, but it doesn't necessarily build change. And I cannot tell you how many times I wish I could go back and call someone or send them an email or slat up in their DMs in order to squash an issue rather than dragging it out on my timeline. Sure, it takes more work, and you probably won't get any subscribers out of it, but if that relationship means anything to you, if that issue means something to you, I think it's actually worth it. Real talk, these conversations offline don't always work. Some people are just assholes, even without a Wi-Fi connection. But I worry about what we're teaching our fans about disagreement, about accountability, discourse, and the value in admitting when we're wrong when everything revolves around fandoms, stand wars, hashtag team so-and-so, and owning people. Last year on Decoded, we did an episode about the excuses that people use to downplay the horrors of slavery. And in it, we used the Holocaust as a rhetorical device, which was a huge mistake. I was called out all over the place, and rightly so, and I almost made it worse by diving headfirst into the public fray on my Twitter feed. Instead, I DM'd someone that had made a post about the video, and I asked if they would be open to talking about it. And thankfully, they were open to hopping on Skype. And through the course of our conversation, I learned that this Holocaust to slavery comparison harms Jewish folks by watering down their history and also suggesting that anti-Semitism is a thing of the past. And this conversation was productive because there was no audience there to take sides or to like or to share. It was just two people having a conversation. There's really only so much that can be said in 140 characters or with a GIF or with a five minute video or even a 15 minute video. We have to remember that there are real people on the other side of those screens. And maybe having these conversations offline, one-on-one, -on -one, without an audience there can help us better understand 
how to have them on a bigger scale. Thank you so much.